Hi guys, welcome back to Rustic and Lace DIY. For those of you who are new, my name is Brenda. For those of you returning, welcome back. I'm so happy to have all of you here with me today. Today, I am fulfilling a wish by one of my viewers who requested some home decor on bees. So, Michelle, this one's for you, as well as all the rest of you watching. So, with all that being said, let's begin. <laughs> Okay, so for this first DIY, I started out with this picture frame that I got from the Dollar Tree and some paper from Hobby Lobby, and then I made out a same on my Cricut. So basically, I start out by taking everything out of the back of the, the picture frame. Basically, I wanted to use the, the shape of the house more than anything. So once I get this all taken out, I give it a good coat of my Waverly White chalk paint. And I'm really sorry this isn't in view. I have a new overhead tripod that I have to get used to here. Um, then I take that house cut out and I am just tracing it with on my paper so that I cut the paper out to that size. Then I get my little seine and I'm gonna put that right in the middle of that house and then once I get this transfer tape off I will have this cute little saying and it says home is where my honey and then it has a B at the end of it <laughs> um, once I got done with that I went with my antique wax by Waverly and I am just distressing the edges and doing a little di dry brushing um, on the front and on the back as well as well as the top and the sides um, just want to give it that old-fashioned look and then once I got that done I took my baby wipe and I just kind of smear the some of the um, wax a little bit just to give it a little softer look then I put everything back together I do put the glass in but I put it behind the little paper cutout that I created and then I am putting the back on and closing it up and that's what it looks like. Then I'm taking this burlap ribbon and I cut it down to make four sides, uh, four strips um, to go around the black paper there between the white frame and the black paper. Um, I just thought it looked better. I had originally tried to make little stitch marks with yellow along the white, but I just felt like it was missing something and when I put the ribbon up to it I just absolutely loved the way that looked. So I went ahead and uh, hot glued some on all the way around it. Then I'm taking this yellow ribbon that I got from Hobby Lobby and I am making a double bow with that and with the black gingham that I got from Dollar Tree. And I'm sorry my camera was moving there. <laughs> almost like an earthquake, yikes. Um, so here I'm making a double bow and I'm just sticking the black on top of the yellow and then I'm gonna take that jute twine and I am going to make a knot around the bow with that jute string. And it took me a little bit to get that all knotted, it's kind of doing it with one hand there. <laughs> And then once I got it all centered, I took the end of that jute string and I'm just wrapping it around the middle and then I hot glue it to the back. Now for the legs, no I didn't hot glue it, I'm sorry, I tied a knot as well and then trimmed it. And I don't know why I did the legs this way, but I did it really weird and instead of attaching them to the back of the bow, I decided to hot glue them together the yellow and the black there and then I fold them in half and put a little hot glue to stick them and then I hot glue it onto the side of that um, house frame which is really dumb I don't know why I did it that way but I did <laughs> so it was kind of weird because then the ribbons didn't want to lay right so I had to kind of hot glue them in place so that they would lay it a little nicely but once I got them both on there I just hot glued the um, bow to the middle then I take some of this little baby's breath I believe I got it from Walmart and I took three strands of it and I am just hot gluing it and sticking it up into the corner of that picture frame 
and I was able to actually push them up inside the corner a little bit. And then I took some of these little yellow flowers I got from the Dollar Tree. I'm sorry, I don't remember what they were called. Um, and I am just hot gluing them above that um, baby's breath. And I just think it came out looking really cute. Then I took some hot glue and I am just putting some hot glue all along the bottom edge of that frame. And this is to make it look like honey dripping. And I took some yellow paint and I painted the, the drips, but I didn't like it. It was too bright. So I went over it with some of the gold color that I've been using, um, which is, let me look here. It's folk art metallic pure gold. And I think it came out looking really cute. I did order some bees from Amazon and I added some to that picture frame as well. Okay, so for the next one, I'm using this plaster in chalk paint in by Waverly, that crate from Dollar Tree, and this printable that I googled free bee printables, and they came up with a whole bunch of things that you can download and print, and so I picked this one. And I started by taking this popsicle stick and I cut it down to the size to cover up the holes on the sides of that crate, the handles, I should say. And my first thought was to make this look like a little book stack. I don't know if it came out looking like a book stack. Um, I think it came out looking pretty cute, but um, I kind of got the idea from Julie's Wood and Designs, or I'll have to, I'll put a link to her um, video in my description box, but she did this with real books and it was amazing. She does amazing stuff. So once I got that all painted with that plaster color, I, and it was dry, I put some Mod Podge on the front and then I'm going to put that paper right over the Mod Podge and I'm just going to smooth it out there and then I let it dry. Once it was dry, I took my X-Acto knife blade and I am just cutting a slit through those little slits of the crate. And you want to make sure you do this when it is dry because if you try it before it's completely dry, it will tear the paper. And when it's dry and you use that knife, it just cuts like butter. It just is very smooth. So then once I was done with that, of course, I put a little bit more Mod Podge over the top of it. And then I got this bright idea that, hmm, you know, I think I have that chicken wire. Maybe if I use this and put it over the top and trace it out, it might look like honeycomb. Well, great idea, but that chicken wire, they're not real even shapes. And I didn't have the right paint color. And all I could think of was trying it with this brown color. And I can tell you, I do not like it. I should have stayed with my original idea, which I end up going to. So after it was done, I looked at them, looked at it, and went, "Ugh, I don't like it. It looks like a turtle shell to me." So I have some white wax, so by folk art, and I thought well, maybe if I put some white wax on it, it will dull it down a little bit, which it did, but it's still. I still didn't like it. So as I was thinking about it, I took that antique wax and I wanted to antique that paper, make it look more old. So once I got it all on there, I just wiped it off with a baby wipe. <clears throat> or maybe it was a napkin. It looks like it was a napkin. And then I went ahead with that antique wax, wax and I um, just antiqued the whole box. And I was hoping that by doing this, maybe it would help that little design there and I still didn't like it. So once it was all dried, I went back to my original idea, which I should have stuck with, and I am ripping this page out of this book, this old book. Well, not really old. It's a book my sister gave me that she didn't like. And I I ripped it down to size and then I just put some Mod Podge on the back of the crate there and then I will put the page on top of that Mod Podge and have it stick on. It kind of, it covers most of that um, outlining that I did of the chicken wire. So I got that all on, smooth it out, let it dry, put some more on there. And then unfortunately, I don't know what happened to my footage, 
but I added some of that ribbon from Dollar Tree and made a bow. I wrapped it around this, the crate, made a bow, and then added those little flowers as well that I got from the Dollar Tree too. And I think it looks pretty cute, but you'll have to check out Julie's books. They're amazing. In fact, I want to make some myself because she does an amazing job on them. And if you're doing a bee theme, this would be great on a tear tray. So the next DIY, <clears throat> I did another printout. I used a jar from Dollar Tree, and then I did this um, crackle paint uh, from Folklore. Folk, what is it? Folk art, sorry. <laughs> um, first I start painting the jar with my Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster, and I paint the whole jar not the inside, just the outside and all around the rim. And then once it's done, I get the crackle paint. That, that's also by Folk Art. And the instructions are a little confusing because it says to, um, if you do a light coat, it will only crackle a little. If you do a thick coat, it will crackle a lot, but don't overbrush. So I would like to know what they mean by overbrush because I don't think I overbrushed but I don't think I put enough on there because it doesn't quite come out the way I was hoping. It does have a crackled look, you'll see it, but it's more of a distressed look than a crackled look, I guess you would say. So once I got that all on there, I let it dry and that's what it looks like. So I'm gonna have to try it again and see if it comes out better with a thicker coat. So I took some of that Mod Podge and I am just putting some Mod Podge on the front of it and then I am going to do the same thing with this printout as I did on the box. And I'm just gonna, um, I trimmed it out and I am going to place that on the front of the jar. And once that has dried, I put some more Mod, Mod Podge over it. Now, I don't know what was wrong with our printer. I think we were running out of black ink because that printout actually came out looking purple, not black. So as I was putting the Mod Podge on it, oh, one thing to note on those printouts, if you're going to do that, you want to spray it with either hairspray or if you have a clear, I have a clear um, spray, uh, spray paint um, stuff. So I put it over that. That helps the uh, ink not run when you're putting on the Mod Podge. So uh, once I had that all on there with the Mod Podge, I took a chip brush and I did some dry um, brushing with the gray paint over the, the, um, the, the printout. And then I take this black um, baker's cord or twine and I'm just going around that print out uh, to make kind of like a little frame around it and I'm just putting a little bit of hot glue on the baker's twine not a lot and then once I was done I took it and I made a little shoestring bow and I just hot glued it onto the middle and then I do go in and trim up the legs there too <clears throat> and once I was done with that I took some of this foam um, flower foam and I put some hot glue on it and I'm just sticking it down inside of the jar and pushing it down and then I took some more of those little yellow flowers that I got from the Dollar Tree and I'm just um, inserting them into the this the styrofoam there or floral foam I guess it is and once I get that all in, I'm going to actually grab some more flowers from the Dollar Tree because I knew those three were not going to be enough. Um, I grabbed these bigger yellow flowers. I think they're the wild flowers, I think is what they're called. I don't remember. And I um, add them into this vase as well. And then since that printout looked purple, I went ahead and grabbed the um, some of my... Uh, lavender and I add some lavender picks to this as well and then I go ahead and I add some of the baby's breath that I got from um, Walmart into that bouquet as well and then I don't show this but I do take some more of that baker's twine and I just wrap it all around the neck part of that jar and I think it really um, gave it some pop part of the crackle process is once you once that crackling paint dries you add a contrasting paint which I used um, mineral in Waverly chalk paint 
And so there it is. And these are just ideas of what you can do if it doesn't turn out right and you have different ideas, go for it. And then I, next project, I take that little trinket jar and I am giving it a good coat of the Waverly White Chalk Paint just because I didn't want it to be so shiny. And once I got that painted, I set it aside and I go over my lid. I know it was gold, but I wanted a brighter gold, so I took some of that gold color that I have and I painted the whole lid gold and then I also took a little wood bead and I'm painting that all gold as well and then I will set that aside to dry and I will take a little paintbrush and I use some of that gold and I go and outline those um, little hexagons now I would recommend using a paint pen because this was hard to stay in the lines and it just to me, I didn't really like it um, the way it looked, so I went ahead and did some dry brushing with my white chalk paint to just soften the lines and make it look a little bit better. And I do like the way it came out. In fact, my husband says this one is his favorite. Once I was done with that and it was dry, I took that little bead and I uh, super glued it to the top, to the lid, and I used my husband's accelerant so that it would... Um, be cured within 10 seconds and then once I'm done with that I don't think I show this part but I do hot glue it to a candlestick that I got from Dollar Tree and I am painting the little um, middle of it has some ridges I'm painting that with that gold paint as well and once all that was dry I took my hot glue gun and I am making honey drippings coming off of the top part of this uh, jar as well just like I did on the picture frame and then I'm going to paint it with that gold paint as well and um, you don't have to put this on a candle stand if you want if, like if you want to use it for a tear tray and don't want it to have that height you could totally just leave it off the candlestick and um, you know and just put it on a tear tray or wherever you're going to put it um, without that so then I take some of that uh, gingham ribbon and I wrap it around the the bottom of that jar and hot glue it and then I made a bow with some of that yellow ribbon and that gingham ribbon and I attached the legs to it this time and I'm sorry I didn't show it I was having all kinds of camera issues that day uh, so then I just hot glued it to the bottom of the container and there it is and I added a B to the to the handle to the top and then one to the bottom and one on the bow as well and I I did paint those bee, bees with a little bit of that gold paint to kind of dull the yellow that was on those bees but I think that came out looking pretty cute. And now the next one is my absolute favorite of all of them. I just absolutely love this, but unfortunately I forgot to hit record and didn't realize it until I was done. And because I loved it so much, I thought I'm going to have to do just like a step-by-step -step of what I did um, to show you guys. Um, so this will be a little different tutorial. <laughs> so what I did is I got these uh, jar cutouts. They're wooden jar cutouts from Etsy, and I will put a link to that in my description box and I painted it with my Waverly chalk paint in the color ink which is basically black I painted the whole sign and then once it was dry I take this calendar that I've mentioned before several times oh sorry first I took my um, burlap ribbon that I got from Hobby Lobby and I hot glued it to the front then I take some of the edges and pull some of the strings out to help fray it. Now I would recommend doing that before you hot gluing, glue it because when you hot glue it then you can't pull it. So some of them I couldn't pull but for the most part I got most of it pulled and that way you can see that fraying look on it. Then I took this calendar that I got from the Dollar Tree and I cut out this page and I absolutely love this page. I wasn't going to do this jar at first. I wanted to do this as a regular sign because I loved the burlap on the side of that. But 
I kept thinking about this jar. So I trimmed down that page and even got rid of that burlap book. And that's why I put the burlap on the back. But I trimmed down the page. I cut out the bee and the honey. And then I took this uh, metal ribbon that I got from Hobby Lobby and I put it on the top as well as that chicken wire that I used for that box and they wrapped around the edges just perfectly. I didn't even have to hot glue them. They just wrapped around and stuck there. Then I used this ribbon that I got off of Amazon and I'll link that as well and this gingham ribbon that I got from Dollar Tree and I just made that bow um, for the top of that sign. And then after that I took some of this jute jute twine and I am going to make a knot at the very end of it um, just so that I have something for the hot glue to hold on to because this is going to be the hanger. So I put some hot glue on it and I put one on each side and I did put a knot on each side. And then I put a knot on the top to make that little loop and then I also put some of that shipping paper on the back to cover it. And then I added a bead to the bow. And there it is. And like I said, this one was my favorite of all of them. I just absolutely love the way this turned out. And this will be the first thing I hang up. <laughs> and here are the final reveal of all the projects. I hope you like them. I hope you were. this is what you were looking for, Michelle. And if any of you guys recreate them, let me know. I'd love to... Uh, hear about it and you may even see pictures of what you do and uh, if you haven't subscribed yet please subscribe if you like what you see hit that like button and hit that notification bell and share this video and just help me get this video out there so that uh, YouTube will promote me even more so I hope you guys all have a blessed day and a wonderful week and we will see you next week bye bye